So this is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, so proper 17b, if you care to know that. Um, I'm, a, I'm gonna start with the intro at the, the Psalm, so go to the back page. Kind of is a, a nice summary and kind of a theme. Uh, here it's from Psalm 51, a Psalm of David. He wrote this in response uh, to his um, sin with Bathsheba. I don't know if you remember that whole story. Bathsheba was someone else's husband and uh, eventually murder and everything goes along with it. And uh, David is confronted by Nathan the prophet and, and David confesses his sins. And this, this was written in response to that. Um, and so... Um, and some of these words we know because we sing them at least once a month. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. So, uh, in David's case, obviously, he had many sins to confess, as we all do. Um, but he realizes that the our hearts are cleansed, and not what we do or what we don't do. It's cleansed by God himself. And, and as we know, it's uh, with Jesus who suffered and died on the cross for us. So it is God who cleans us, who restores us, who upholds us. It's, it's uh, him who does that. Um, and so this kind of this washing, and we hear this purge me with hyssop. Hyssop was the plant that was used because it was kind of a, um, uh, had lots of branches on it and leaves. They would use that, and that was what they used to when they painted the doorpost. Uh, for the Passover, but it was also used when um, they would dip it in water and they would do the, I call it the holy water, but that's, that's, the, that's what was going on with that. So David, in using that, purged me with hyssop, meaning, you know, sp spread the water on me from the, from the uh, as it's dipped into the water and, and uh, wash me. And then obviously, well, like, like I said, creating and upholding and restoring um, uh, my heart, Lord. So that's what's going on with that. So that we have this, the um, forgiveness and sin, washing away of sin, and all that goes along with that. So that's that's the psalm or the intro of of the uh, of the day of this Sunday coming up. So let's turn to the Old Testament reading in Deuteronomy chapter four. Now Deuteronomy. Uh, this is Moses speaking, and this is right before they go into the promised land. So they've been in the 40 years of the wilderness wandering, and um, they're getting ready to go into the promised land, and it, this is kind of God's and Moses, more Moses, but God included, um, his kind of final words with them uh, before they go into the promised land. He will not be going into the promised land with them because uh, he sinned, and God said, well, the sin was, if you remember, um, the people were whining and complaining that they were thirsty. And God said to Moses, speak to the rock and the water will come forth. But he didn't speak to the rock. He hit it not once, but twice in his anger, which is kind of interesting because Moses was the most humble person of the whole community, but he really got ticked with them. And so God says, nope, you're not going in. But Moses gets to see the, the promised land. God shows him however he does that. You know, uh, so he got to see the promised land. But Moses is realizing that um, uh, he's got great concern for the people because even though God gives them his word, the laws, the decrees, he knows they're not going to follow him. He, he just knows. He's not gonna, they're not going to follow them. Um, and so in chapter 4, um, already, because um, it's not till um, chapter 5 that he gives them the Ten Commandments. I mean, so this is before the giving of the Ten Commandments. Again, he did it in 40 years earlier in Mount Sinai in Exodus 20. Uh, but he says these words. He says, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live 
and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I commanded you, nor take uh, from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. So I'm going to just stop there. And I want to, I want to go to that word listen. Um, the word, the Hebrew word is shema. And it's a, it's a, um, the, de- the definition here, because later on in Deuteronomy chapter six, uh, hear, O Israel, that's the same word. So listen, and it's a believe the words and then act accordingly to the words. That's the word, that's what that means. Shema means believe the words, listen, but believe the words that God says to you and then act accordingly um, to the words um, that has been said. So he talks about these statutes and just decrees. So we would call them the commandments. Um, so, you know, that, that you do them. Uh, and then don't add to them and then don't take away from them. Well, last week we learned that they added a whole bunch to them. Remember, the, you had the original 10 and they added 600 plus more. Um, but, you know, this whole Shema, and that, that word is throughout Deuteronomy, Shema. Believe and act accordingly. Yes? What word did you say that referred to in our reading? Listen. Listen. It's the, and it's the Hebrew word is Shema. Um, but it's, it's, and it's, it, it can, the, the first, if you, you dictionary, it's here. Just mean here. Oh, here. You can hear the light. You can hear the fan going. But this, the, this sense of, I not only want you to hear, I want you to listen and then believe it and then act according to it. So do what it says. How do you spell that? S-H-E-M-A. Okay. Do you want me to write the Hebrew? I don't know what it. I mean, I could write it, and you would have no idea if I'm right or not. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> don't matter. So, uh, so he wants them. So, uh, and then our readings, we we skip a couple verses and we jump down to verse six. Keep them and do them, um, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples. Who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This comes more important a couple chapters later in chapter six of Deuteronomy, where that, that's the one that everybody quotes, you know, um, listen, Shema, to what the Lord your God says, and teach them to your children as you walk, as you sit, as you lie down. The, so the teach them diligently to your children and here to your children's children, so your grandchildren, so that, that we're doing that. And he's saying, when you do this and you live according to the word of the Lord, everyone else will go, wow, look at them. They must have an awesome God because they're following in his ways and they're living the way they, that God wants them to live. And that was, God, God kind of told them that when... When you go into the promised land, I want you to be different than everybody else and how you treat, how you speak, you know, what you believe than everybody else. So that people would go, oh, that's pretty cool. We want to be like them. We want to be with them, which is true for us as well. That God says, follow my ways. And people are drawn to that um, and that we have that. So this is the, um, you know, Shema, listen, get that word in you. The word of the Lord, believe it, and then act according to it. So it's more than just, oh, got it. But it's, uh, I just like say there's a, uh, this, the heart and the mind that they're working together. And then hands and feet and mouth and everything else that goes along with that. All right? Questions, comments? Let's go over to the gospel reading in Mark chapter 7. This is a continuation of last week. Um, If you remember, uh, Jesus really lays into them about um, 
what they were doing and not doing. And, um, and if you remember, um, they were um, breaking the fourth commandment because they had this extra rule about, you know, my, my, my parents are in need, but this is Corbin. And so I'm going to give this to the Lord because they added those extra rules and regulations. And Jesus is going, uh, there was 10. That was more than enough. You don't need to do any more. So this is a continuation of the conversation that Jesus is having with the people. So Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. So in other words, they had no idea what he was talking about. What are you talking about, Jesus? What do you mean what we take in and what we don't take in? What defiles us and doesn't defile us? And so he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. Now, if you remember, in the Old Testament, there were certain foods that they could eat and there were certain foods that they could not eat. Of course, for us here in America, the one that we are so thankful that Jesus says it's okay to eat is what? Bacon. 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 <laughs> Thank the Lord. You know, but this was, there was, and this was Old Testament, so this was also setting apart the people, but then Jesus comes and says that, you can eat all that. It's not, you know, because they were, they were going, look, God, at how much we are eating the good stuff and look at how much we're not eating. But probably in secret, they're eating bacon like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> um, and so he says that. Now, this is kind of very interesting. I don't know if you remember in the book of Acts, um, Peter had a vision and he saw all these animals coming down and the Lord says to him, um, you can eat those. And Peter says, no, they're not, they're unclean. And Jesus says, no, they're okay to eat. And so, and then he gets called to the Gentile house. And then Peter goes, now I realize what that, that whole vision was about, was that the gospel, the kingdom of God is for all people. So, and then, you know, that we can eat all these, this different food now. We can eat the unclean food. Um, and so I think, we believe that <coughs> Peter and Mark, who wrote this, were that P this was Peter's gospel, meaning he kind of told, he would tell the story to Mark, and Mark would write the story down. So that's why we think this little, oh, declaring all food to be clean, kind of, it just seems odd. Why, why is that important for us to know? Well, that's kind of what we think that is. Verse 20, and he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For within, out of the heart of man, Come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Now, if you were to summarize evil thoughts, sexual morality, so on and so forth, what would we, what would we call that? What is that? It is sin. It's sin in us. It's original sin. It's the sin that we are born with. We inherited it from our parents who got it from their parents all the way back to Adam and Eve. And so this is, what's, this is what causes us to sin, not what we eat and what we don't eat, which would go in direct contradiction to everything that everybody believed during the time of Jesus because they thought, oh, that person sinned because they ate bacon or they ate, you know, whatever other food was not allowed to be eaten. And Jesus says, that totally bypasses the heart. That goes to the stomach, and eventually you get rid of it. He says, that doesn't defile you. It's what's in your heart. It's your sinful heart that causes that. That's why, you know, in our intro it, um, that we read, you know, created me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit with me. It, this is the problem. It's not, you know, it's not the food we eat, and all that kind of goes along with that. So, um, so he kind of, Jesus goes right, I like to say, it goes right to the heart of the matter. <laughs> it goes right to the problem, which is our sinfulness, our sinful hearts. Um, and so that's, that's what's going on with that. Questions, comments?
Yes. Do the Jewish today go by all of those six hundred? Yeah, they refu- They they don't always eat. You know, they don't eat bacon. They oh, yeah. there's a whole. They don't eat all that stuff because that they're part of their dietary um, laws that they follow. Now, if you look at it, is bacon really good for you? Not really. No, not really. But we like to eat bacon. But you know, that's what that is. So yes, Orthodox Jews, meaning those who are, yes, the ones with the the curly cues. Um, yeah, they follow in those, and because the when you say Jewish, it's a rather odd group because they're Jewish by faith. Mm-hmm. There's the Jewish nation, Israel. And then you have uh, the Jewish nationality. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're, if you're one, you're all of them. I mean, you can be one and not, you can be Jewish, become Jewish, and not have Jewish blood in you. There are people who are Jewish who don't live in Israel, and then all of that. So it's kind of that, it's a unique group that, that, you know, you have the nationality, you have the faith, and then you have, um, you know, following the, the faith, nationality, and then the bloodline, and you are of that. So it's, that's kind of with that. So, yes, Jewish, Orthodox Jews still follow that, so, um, in dealing with that. So they're missing out on bacon. Oh, well. They're also missing out on eating on Saturday. I know. <laughs> well, that there's, yes. There are some restaurants who are owned by Jewish people, and they don't, they're not open on Saturday, but back in the old days, you know, there, there were some restaurants and shops that were closed on Sunday because they were Christian, which that's, that's what happens. So that's okay. All right. Uh, the epistle reading, Ephesians chapter 6. This is our last reading from the book of Ephesians. We've been in it for a couple, week, a couple months here. And so it'll be a couple years before we come back to that. And this is probably the most uh, familiar or popular part of the book of Ephesians. It's putting on the full armor of God. So that's, what, that's what's going on there. So um, Paul is kind of, you know, talking to the Ephesians, talking to us, and kind of inspiring us, encouraging us uh, with these words. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, then as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me that the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare boldly as I ought to speak. And so we have, um, you know, Paul saying, you know, we, we live in dark times. We live in sinful times. It's, it's bad out there. So let's make sure that we're, we are ready for battle. And he and he's in and all. In my mind, in many commentators' mind, is that Paul's in prison, and we think he's looking at the guard going, hey, that's a pretty good, you know, illustration that he puts on the helmet, protect his head, puts on the breastplate, you know, puts the shoes on, takes the shield, has the, the, the sword. And that word, we think sword long, is probably more dagger, so short, you know, that you can use it. Um, and uh, um, that, that not only protects you, but you can also, you know, uh, do battle with Satan. And, and it's the word of God, he says. It's the word of God that we use. Uh, that reminds me when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, what was Jesus' response to every temptation? It is written. And then he would quote some Bible passage. 
So that's, you know, he didn't, you know, uh, I cast you out. No, he uses the word of God. Um, and that's the same, the same thing that we have, that when Satan and temptation comes, we can use the word of God uh, to uh, defend and to fight back with all this going on. So we put on the whole armor um, and that we, we have that. So that we stay strong and in the power of his might and you know and it's always god that does that for us we can't do it by ourselves if we try to do that by ourselves we would fail we fail miserably but we always put our strength and hope in the lord so questions comments well i'm not done talking yet <laughs> Well, let's go to the colic of the day, the prayer of the day. O oh God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish us in every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I, I love this colic. I don't know if it really fits in with the theme of what we were saying, but whatever i didn't choose it uh but it is that he he is the source of all that is just and good that um you know that we may grow in his grace and that we would bring forth the fruit of good works that we would do what god would want us to do obviously that's a wonderful prayer and then we should pray that every day um but as uh, we live in our lives realizing it's not the outside world is sinful enough but really it's what's in here that we should be concerned about the most, the first, that we make this right. And God does. He cleanses our heart. And, and obviously, we can go back to an event in our lives and we say, aha, that's where God did cleanse me. And that's our baptism, that we can say, ah, God made me his child there. And, we can, and I just say, that's when he put on us the armor of God. That in our waters of baptism, we can always go back to that, that we were ready for that. Some of I have to call it our robe of righteousness, which is has all of that with that that we that we deal with that. So, um, but we got to use it. We got to use it every day, and you know, and God allows things to happen in our lives that we do trust in Him. It's really just you know trusting and relying on Him for everything. Questions, comments. Snide remarks? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it is 35 minutes. I mean, we did go half an hour, so with that, so. All right, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.